Hey Milton, I thought it would be easiest to do a quick video to explain a little bit how this program works. So you will log into this through your Connect website directly. It's not going to be able to be accessed anywhere in Blackboard. Once you get in the course, it'll look something similar to this. There are modules and case studies that you'll be completing. So you'll start with module one. The first chapter is a basic review about coding with case studies. And then the chapters go on to be specified in different fields of medicine. So uh, modules have three chapters in them. And uh, there's not really a whole lot to read um, with the ebook. It's mainly has the chapter one that uh, covers all of the uh, information as a whole that you need to code the case studies. And then it gets into case studies. Uh, that's basically all we're doing is we're doing a lot of medical coding. So uh, I'm going to get back in the course here. And um, you'll start with modules one and two. And then the case studies. Now these are going to be some pretty hard coding scenarios. Uh, I'm going to take a look in module one under chapter two. Pull it open. And I'm going to send you some guides for the chapter two module and the case studies. So what you're going to see here is a medical record. And we have to read all of the record. And you're going to put in your codes in these boxes here. So these are uh, should be set up for unlimited attempts. So it may take you several attempts to get everything correct. Um, and that's OK. It's all good practice. But you'll have an option to put in your diagnosis codes in this first column, the procedure codes in the second column, anesthesia codes, and then Hicks picks codes if applicable. I'm not uh, too worried about us focusing on Hicks picks right now. I mainly want us to focus on the diagnosis and procedures. Um, you may see some codes. We will see some codes that will be for inpatient hospital care that comes from a different book called ICD-10 PCS. And I'm not um, too for certain that we're going to even have to worry about that for now. I think what I want to focus on is the diagnosis and procedures. So when you look at your guide, I tried to highlight the places of interest for you to code. So the first question is an office visit. So I haven't highlighted their office. And I last saw this patient six months ago. So she's an established patient. That's important to remember. Um, anyone that's been seen within three years is still considered an established patient. Anyone after the three years is going to be a new patient. So this is a new patient, a uh, new office visit. So you'll turn to the E&M section of the CPT code book and you'll have to determine what level it is. So this is the hardest part. It's just going to take a lot of practice to guess. <laughs> um, you know, you have to look at the history, examine medical decision making components of a medical record. So usually with the medical decision making, if there's any kind of prescription management uh, or um, uh, like injections that we have here or uh, other procedures done, it's, it, it'll go a little bit higher. It'll be ranked a little bit higher. Uh, this is probably going to be a low level office visit because there's not a whole lot of history or exam here. It's just pretty straightforward. So the, the chapter two starts with allergy and immunology. So your CPT code is going to be an office visit. And then you'll see here I've highlighted epinephrine was injected and then there was an IV injection. So I made you a note. There's two subcutaneous injections that were performed. The epinephrine would be captured by a HICTX code. If you have a HICPIX book, if you'd like to attempt that for extra practice, that would be good. But uh, I mainly want you to focus on the ENM codes and procedures. Then the diagnostic, we have anaphylactic shock and it was due to bee venom. So these are going to be two separate codes, one for the anaphylactic shock and one for an accidental um, reaction to bee venom that's going to be found in the table of drugs and chemicals. If we look at chapter two review question two, this is a consult. So I have highlighted the word consult. That's a separate section in the E&M table or a section of the CPT book. So consultations are different from office visits. They have their own section. And then his diagnosis was Kaposi sarcoma 
secondary to AIDS. He is going to have two diagnosis codes. Likely the AIDS is going to be coded first since it's the cause of the sarcoma. It's not too hard one to code. And question three of the chapter two review is a patient. Okay, I have highlighted here. He is seen today for the first time. So that's an office e &M visit for a new patient. And this one was pretty confusing. It didn't have a straightforward diagnosis. So I highlighted what you're going to code the diagnosis from. So he had nasal polyps. That's one diagnosis. He had lymphoid hyperplasia. That's a second diagnosis. And he had postnatal nasal drainage. So those are the diagnoses that we're coding. And also there was skin testing performed in the office. So I have a note there, you're going to code that also, the skin testing. And that skin testing code is going to come from the medicine section of CPT. All right, so this file is called Chapter 2 Module, and I'm going to email that to you. Now when you get into the case studies, I will show you what a completed one looks like. Let me get out of this view here. Uh, the case studies are pretty hard. Well, we get into chapter two. This very first one is like uh, very overwhelming. I'm just going to show you what the codes look like here. These are all the codes captured in this encounter. Now, again, this is the case study review. So you have your modules that are going to have um, shorter reviews that you will work on. And then when you get to these case studies, they get a little bit more complex. So and um, this one here was this 99234, what's their office visit? Okay, they were in observation. So, and I'll show you my notes I have on this. So this patient was in observation. Looks like they had an EKG. They had two different x-rays ran. They had um, a code for collecting a blood sample. They had several pathology codes. Um, there's several HCPCS codes of what was administered for the drugs, and you'll see that that's times two right there. That means it's um, a drugs at a set medication, like 0.5 milligrams, and if you inject uh, one milligram, you would have that code times two. And again, I'm not going to worry about HCPCS for now. I, I may want us to focus on this uh, later. I'm not going to say we wouldn't work on it, but for now, just to get started, we'll focus on diagnosis and procedures. So there are five diagnosis codes here, several CPT codes. So now let's look at the second document that has the cases. So this is the same one we were looking at. I have highlighted here for you that she was in observation. And that's another section of the e &M. She had a cough as part of her diagnosis. She had a headache and nasal discharge. And uh, she was administered paracetamol and developed an adverse reaction, reaction. I made a note for you to code that diagnosis. And her definitive diagnosis was anaphylactic shock. Uh, and her testing, she had a complete blood cell count, CBC, that comes from medicine. She had a chest x-ray that comes from radiology. She had a 12-lead electrocardiogram that comes from medicine. Uh, x-ray of the paranasal sinuses, again, from radiology. She had an injection. Um, intramuscularly. She had an intravenous uh, procedure done. She had a nebulizer done, which is a breathing treatment. And uh, I made a note here to code for the venipuncture to draw blood, um, code for two infusions, code for nebulizer. So I'm trying to give you a little bit of guidance here because um, these aren't necessarily as straightforward with, you know, it doesn't say we took a puncture of the patient and drew blood. Um, this is just going to be implied. And that was case one. I'm going to update these while we go. The next case, this is a lot easier. This one was a consultation. The consultation included a ventilation procedure. So ventilated is highlighted. The diagnosis was septic shock with respiratory failure with hypoxia and pneumonia due to H influenza. So these are one, two, three, four codes. Code for septic shock with respiratory failure code with hypoxia, a code with pneumonia, and a code for the H influenzae. Case three is an office visit, so I have highlighted here new patient brought to the office. So new patient office visit. Um, we are going to code for a urinalysis procedure. We're going to code for a complete blood cell count. We're going to code for creatinine in blood. We're going to code for 
anti streptolysin o o <laughs> I'm, I'll leave that as it is um anti dna testing uh, throat culture that shows group A beta hemolytic streptococcus and a renal ultrasound. So I'm trying to uh, let you identify what specific procedures are going to be coded. And the assessment, uh, acute post streptococcus lamellulonephritis, boy, these are a mouthful, secondary to streptococcal pharyngitis. Uh, allergy and immunology case four, this is a new patient office visit, code a test for the audiogram, the impression is the diagnosis. I'm not going to read all of these off to you, but I did highlight like this one here, highlighted emergency room. So that's an ENR visit that comes from the E&M section. Uh, so the E&M section covers office visits, emergency room, consultations, inpatient hospital visits for initial or subsequent care, um, uh, modest observation. There's a lot going on in the NM. Uh, this one, a uh, patient that was seen in the emergency facility, but I've highlighted here, she was admitted to a pa pediatric critical care unit. That's a specific ENM code. And out case seven, this is established patient office visit. So this is just hopefully to guide you on what you're gonna code. So I'm gonna send these two files to you. And just for a quick review, you're gonna log into Connect directly from the website. You can access the ebook. Let me pull up the student view so it will actually look like what you see. And you will you can start with modules one and two for this week. I'm going to try to give you as many of these guides as I can. I don't know how quickly I can turn them out, but um, you definitely are going to need these to get started. So we'll start with module one, chapter one and two. And then when you go to case studies, we're going to go into chapter two. So that's going to get us started. These have unlimited attempts. So I think this will be a great learning experience. I think this is already helping me to teach advanced medical coding. So um, we're just going to work through this together, Milton. And if you have any other questions in the meantime, email is the best way to reach me. And I uh, hope this helps. I hope you have a great weekend. Talk to you later.